From Blink-182 to IDK Howe and Deftones, this is how The Cure inspired a whole generation of bands. With their iconic album Wish set to be reissued for its 30th anniversary, we thought we'd take a look back into the Rock Sound archive to hear why they have been such a huge inspiration to so many artists. Let's start with Blink-182, who of course collaborated with frontman Robert Smith on all of this, taken from their 2003 untitled album. And back in 2019, Mark Hoppus told us about his longtime admiration for the band, saying, Robert Smith and The Cure probably inspired my songwriting Writing the most, from the way that I write lyrics right through to melodies. I think music really connects people to who they are, and when you find an artist or a band who you feel are speaking to who you are and your own experiences, that connection is always really strong. IDK Howe recorded a cover version of classic single Boys Don't Cry last year, and Dallin and Ryan told us why that felt like the perfect song for them to rework. It's funny a thing about cover songs, like music can be like such a sacred thing to people, especially like when you're dealing with legendary acts like The Cure. It's, it's not some obscure B-side from some obscure band, you know, this is like legend status. But a lot of people, I find like when you cover a song, sometimes people think you're trying to like beat the original or something, but that's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, ever yeah. the case. Like when a band covers a song, it's because like you really love it, you know, and you, there's no... There's very rarely outdoing an original, especially like The Cure. You can't touch it. So it's, it's more like for us just to have a good time playing music that we love, really. Deftones have previously covered If Only Tonight We Could Sleep and later enlisted Robert Smith to remix Teenager from White Pony as part of their Black Stallion project. Well, that whole camp has been very, very nice to our camp. You know what I mean? We've, we've, we've years ago we did the... Uh, what was it called? The MTV Cure thing for The Cure. Um, I remember that now. That was the MTV Icon thing, right? That's it. That's that was it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was, was such a cool, cool idea. Just the fact that we were able to be part of that, that was really amazing. And uh, that went really well for us. And uh, so there's kind of been that connection there. And then over the years, and then not too long ago, like last year or two years ago, we did his festival out here in Pasadena in Southern California. And just, just very welcoming, very nice people. Um, so there's that love there between the mutual love, obviously. And then um, I think maybe management may have reached out to him or Chino may have reached out to him and he was down, you know what I mean? So I think just having those connections really help, you know? Modson cited The Cure as one of the influences on his recent album, Internet Killed the Rockstar, drawing particular inspiration on the song Better Man. As far as The Cure goes, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's a band that was better better put together as far as like great musicians, great classic. I want to say The Cure was a three piece pretty much the whole time, I think. Classic like setup and like, dude, dark ass imagery, dark ass fucking minor songs. The Cure and The Smiths to me uh, danced this brilliant tightrope walk of like making the dichotomy that I love in music, which is happy and sad. I love happy and sad meeting in music. I think the Cure and the Smiths both like made these minor songs or these major songs with sad lyrics or a minor song with happy lyrics. And it was just this cool fucking thing. Um, so I tried to really take elements of that into the making of this album. Murray from the excerpts told us why they decided to cover 1985's In Between Days as part of their EP, So No One Told You Life Was Gonna Be This Way. I got my guy right here, waiting in the wings. My guy. Say hello, Robert. Hello. Goat. And collectively, The Cure are one of our favorite bands, Tom's a borderline obsessive so he's thrilled that we got this track on the on the record and yeah it he tom made this drum loop that kind of rolls throughout and i think it's a really nice way to to end the ep with a a, a burst of volume and color this was a really fun one to record so ryan's got this really good old-fashioned cocktail recipe so made a bunch of those a few cocktails and a few beers and, and kind of just recorded this in a really loose state and I think you I, th I think you can hear the kind of fun carefree attitude 
we had when we were recording it, and I think it makes it sound all that more joyous. Holding Absence frontman Lucas Woodland told us how the track Beyond Belief from the album The Greatest Mistake of My Life was partly inspired by the work of The Cure. The Cure was kind of what we were trying to aim for, and obviously we'd never sound like them, you know what I mean? So that's like, that's quite a big thing is, is it's all right to rip a band off as long as you don't sound like you've ripped a band off, you know? Um, and I think for us, it, it sound, it's a Holding Absence song through and through. It's got the ambience, it's got the atmospherics, it's got this kind of epic intensity but you know with the subtle nuance that the cure bring to their music and, and like i said vocally i very consciously put myself in a different kind of place for that song in the same way that robert smith always has it's just this flamboyant uh fluidity you know what i mean it's like words just come out of your body rather than controlling what they sound like when they do, you know? Finally, to close us out, Broadside recorded us an acoustic cover version of Wish single Friday I'm In Love as part of our At Home Shower Sessions performance series. I don't care if Monday's blue, Tuesday's grey and Wednesday too, Thursday I don't care about you, it's Friday I'm in love. The Cure's reissue of Wish will be released this October. That's your Rock Sound News update. I've been James Wilson-Taylor. We will see you again soon.